Today we're going to look at how we can quickly create castles in Blender. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Don't forget to check out my free material pack with over 20 free materials. So we're going to use a free add-on to assist us in this process, which is included in Blender. I'm also working on a geometry nodes tutorial for castles as well, but I'm waiting for a 3.1 node to come out that will make that process a lot easier. But if you come to your add-ons here and you enable the extra objects add-on, that will give us all the options that we need to continue. So now that we have that add-on enabled, what we can do is we can hit Shift A, go to Mesh here, come down here, go to Extras, and you'll see that we have the Wall Factory. So let's go ahead, click that. And you'll see that that creates a wall for us. And we're gonna take a look at the different settings we have, and then we're gonna look at how we can kind of randomize this, bevel it, and create a material, and then use a curve modifier to deform this for us. So let's take a look at our options over here. We have the start and the stop here. I like to set mine to zero, and then I just end it out that way. And the reason I like to do that is because there is a pivot point on that middle point right there, and that'll make using the curve modifier to create the shape of our wall much easier. And then as we come down here, we have the bottom and the top, which will be the height. And then we have the edging, which is that on the edges there. I just leave that at the default value. And then as we move down here, we can change kind of the block sizing. So you can change the width and the variance and the minimum size. Uh, same thing for the height and same thing for the depth. I like to leave the depth at the default setting as I think that's a pretty good setting. And then for the height, I like to turn the minimum up a bit because I don't like all these little tiny ones in there, but that's something you can play with yourself. I'm going to go ahead and put mine 0.5 just so they kind of have some chunkier bricks because I like the more stylized look. Down here we have the grout, which is the spacing between the bricks. So you can make that smaller if you want those to be closer together. I'm going to go ahead and leave that at default because we're going to go ahead and scale those all together. And then down here we have the openings and the top arch. So the top arch here is just a decorative element on the opening and same with the bottom arch if you want to add that. And you can see here you can change the curve level and kind of the thickness. I'm going to go ahead and bring mine down and kind of round it out a bit. And I'm going to turn off the bottom arch. And here you can adjust the width and the height of the opening. Now by default, I think this is designed to be a window, but you could make this much bigger and create yourself a doorway as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and reset those to the default value. Now to control the positioning of the window, this is where I think it's a little confusing. I think that a simple X and Y might be easier, but you have the indent which controls where it's placed horizontally, and then you have the bottom where it's placed vertically. And you can see that as it's moving around, it's trying to accommodate the geometry to match the size of that window. So that is something to consider that you're going to want to kind of land it somewhere where it feels like it's naturally insetting in there. Down here we have crenelles which are the little tops of a castle there. So for our base wall, we're gonna want it to be a little bit longer. So let's come up here and maybe make this 50 long. And you can make this as long as you want, but I'm just gonna kind of do some so that it kind of fills out the front view. And then I want these windows to kind of appear all along the way. So I'm gonna come here to the opening. I'm gonna click repeat. And that's just gonna repeat that along the wall. I'm gonna check that these look fine as is. And with that, we're kind of ready to go. So what we'll do is we'll click out of the view and that will turn this into a mesh that we can now use as you see up here, wall three. So let's go ahead and first off, let's add a bevel modifier. So let's go ahead, grab this, add a bevel modifier. And I found that maybe two I thought looked pretty good. I'm gonna right click shade smooth. And then you can come down here into the shading and click harden normals. And that can help prevent kind of any ugly normals kind of on the edges of this since this is pretty low poly flat geometry. But you'll notice that we have this gap that is far too large. So what we're going to do is we're going to tab into edit mode here. And you'll see that everything is a separate object inside of edit mode, which means we can come up here and we can grab this right here and turn this into individual origins. And you'll see now that they all rotate in whatever individually. And what we're going to do first is we're going to hit spacebar and search. I have spacebar set to search. It may be F2 for you. And we're going to look for randomize. And you'll see this mesh transform randomize. We're gonna go ahead and select that. And you see what that does is just kind of garble everything and distort it a little bit. And that gives it a much more kind of natural feeling. Now what we can do is select everything again. I'm just gonna press the A button there. 
I'm gonna press S and we're just gonna kind of scale that up until everything's kind of touching. And I'm okay with a little bit of gaps because I think that kind of gives it a natural stylized look. Great, so now we have that. So let's look at how we can deform this and create the shape of the castle that we want. Now, if you want, and we'll do this with the tower, you can make this a full circular castle, or if you wanted, you could you know duplicate this, rotate this, and create kind of a box castle. But a lot of times castles were kind of built around hills, so they kind of curved around their land, and that's how you may want to do this too. So what we're gonna do is add another modifier, and we're gonna add a curve modifier there. We're gonna hit Shift A here and create a curve. So we're gonna create a curve, and we're gonna go Bezier curve. And then what we're going to do is grab this and select that Bezier curve. And you can see right now it's not doing much, and that's because that curve is so small. So what we're gonna do is grab our curve here. We'll switch into wireframe view so we can see it. We're gonna go ahead and just scale that curve up so it's about the length of the wall there. And you see how it is now falling on. And that's why in the beginning I wanted this to start on the origin point because it makes this kind of curve process easier. Now what we can do is tab into edit mode on the curve and we can move this around until we get the shape of the wall that we want. And you'll see that if you pull out longer, it's not going to follow. So you would have to create another wall or you could create an array. Let's go ahead and put the array here on the mesh wall. Create an array, put that above the curve. And then if we tab into the curve, You can see that we can now use that to kind of control the wall. I'm just gonna kind of reset this and create a general curved wall to use for this. A bit about our sponsor. Skillshare is a great place to learn in 2022. It's where I got started learning design fundamentals. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of incredible classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. They have classes on Blender, character design, productivity, cinematography, illustration, business, and more. I'm a top teacher on the platform, and I host several Blender courses focused on characters in Blender. It's a great place to start learning Blender as I really focus on kind of the basics in these courses and trying to help level up. In my Your First 3D Character class, I'll walk you through the process of modeling and texturing your first 3D character. This class focuses on the basics and it's made for beginners to Blender. It's curated specifically for learning and there are no ads. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. We're gonna grab this wall and just to make it a little bit easier to see, we're gonna hide so that we can focus on our tower. We'll go back to Mesh, Extras, Wall Factory. Great, so we don't want all these windows. We're gonna go ahead and turn off Repeat. We just want one and we don't necessarily need this thick of a um, tower. So I'm gonna reduce this because this is gonna be the radius. Let's say that we want the radius of our tower to maybe be 25 meters. And I just switched to side view if you're wondering what happened there. Great. So now what we wanna do is make this taller. So let's make it about twice as tall. So we'll go ahead and do 30 and make that twice as tall as our wall. And then a lot of times these windows, at least in fantasy and things, are up in the top tower. So what we're gonna do is come down here to the openings and we're going to grab that bottom right there and we're just gonna move that up. And I think that's about high enough. Great, so we're gonna tab back out into object mode. And we can do that whole process again of tossing a battle flower on there. Go ahead, harden those normals, shade smooth for that. Hard and normals to work, you need to have the auto smooth set on there. We'll go in here, we'll randomize our transforms, and then we'll scale everything up. And great, we're where we started with the other one. So I'm gonna go ahead, hit Alt H to bring back our wall so we can see it. So you can see here that we have our tower about twice as tall as this wall. And what we wanna do is we're going to wrap this around a circular curve. So one method I saw was using the simple deform, but I prefer using the curve because this gives you more control in the long run. So we're gonna do, set shift A, we're gonna come here to the curve and we're going to add a circle curve there at the top. We'll come here with this curve modifier and we'll grab that Bezier circle. And you'll see that that now wraps around that circle, but it's all kind of mashed into each other. So what we can do is grab that circle and we can scale this up all the way so that it breaks. And then what we can do is slowly bring it back in at a better angle until those bricks kind of connect. And there you can see 
that we now have our tower and our windows over here. But you see here that if we wanna move our tower to the front, that it's going to break, and that's because it's kind of based off this curve. So a simple fix to that is to take this curve, take your tower, hit Control P, and Object Keep Transform, and that will attach the two so that you can move this forward on the Y axis. We're gonna move that into the front of our castle there. And then we're gonna go ahead and rotate this until the window is kind of facing to the front. So we'll go ahead, grab that so it's facing to the front. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, grab kind of all of our objects in the scene there and just hide, and we're just gonna focus on this roof for a moment. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit Shift A, create a mesh, create a plane. Let's go ahead and rotate that 90 degrees there. And we're going to go into edit mode. We're gonna to go to vertice mode. We're gonna select these top two, and we're going to scale that in. Now what we're gonna do is tab back on the object mode. We're gonna add a solidify modifier and a subdivision modifier. And you can see how this is starting to kind of create a scale look, which will kind of help us make what we want up there. So we're gonna go ahead do 0.1 here to give it some depth, come down here to the edge data. And if I come to the side view, you'll see what this is doing. We'll go ahead, set our offset to zero to get that centered on our origin point. And then we'll do 0.25 for our outer. And we'll copy that and paste it in the inner. And you can see how that's kind of tightening things up there. So that's great. Now let's go ahead and turn our subdivision up one notch and let us give us a rounder shape. This isn't perfect shape, but we don't want it to be too high poly because we'll be making a lot of them and they'll be far away. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe turn this up to 0.25 thickness, just give us a little bit thicker there and bump both of these numbers up to 0.5, which will give us a bit more kind of a square edge. Great. Now what I'm going to do is I want to apply these modifiers and rather than apply both, a quick thing you can do is hit this and search for convert mesh and that will just automatically apply all the modifiers you have. Now let's tab into edit mode here, select everything. Let's go ahead, drag this down and that's so that our rotation point is there at the tip. Great, now we're ready to go ahead and create a array system which we'll then use on a curve. So let's go ahead and we'll add two array systems. And we're going to do relative offset for both of these. And for the top one here on factor X, let's do 0.8. And then on the bottom one here, we'll do zero here, and then let's do 0.5 for the Y and 0.5 for the Z. And what that's doing is kind of creating this offset upwards. Great. Now what I'm gonna do is maybe set the top one here to about eight and the bottom one to about six and we'll adjust these numbers later as needed. You can see here how we're getting that kind of medieval shingled look. Now what we're going to do is create a curve. So we'll go back to curve, create another circle curve and let's go ahead and change this just so it's a little bit easier. So we'll call that roof and we'll create a curve modifier and we'll select that roof. And you can see here that it's kind of turning us into a cone. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab that. We're going to scale that out so that it kind of accepts there. Now you'll notice that this is creating just a kind of tall and skinny um, curve. So what we're going to do is tab into edit mode here. We're gonna select all of our points and hit control T. And then what that allows us to do is rotate the tilt. And you can see here that as we rotate the tilt, we can kind of fan it to cone out. Now we want these fat ends to be kind of focused down. So this is actually upside down right now. So what we're going to do is hit Control T, drag that to the right until the tip here is kind of touching. Great. Now what we will do is grab this curve, parent it to these objects. And now that that's parented, we can go ahead and grab these top objects here. Make sure you don't have the curve selected. Hit rotate 180. And if you're in the front view there, that will just bring you down. Great. So let's hit Alt H and see if this fits our tower yet. So we'll go ahead, bring this up here to our tower and we'll see that it's still too small. So we can go ahead, scale that up. And then what I'm going to do is come into the top view, make sure that fits over there and great. So now this is procedural. So you can actually keep playing this, this if you want. So you can go ahead, add more, add less, play with the scale. Don't forget to check out my free material pack with over 20 free materials and all my courses and products are also on Gumroad if you'd like to check those out as well.